kitchen sink We will chat, we will make you think You will not want to go to the loo You could miss a lot if you had that poo Stay and watch and join in Yeah! Yeah! Hello! <laughs> Hello! Hi everyone! Hello, Hello everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen sink. <laughs> I'm Sarah. <laughs> and I'm Lucy. And uh, yeah, welcome to our show. Uh, for any new viewers, we are a, a chat show, comedy chat show. And every week we have regular features such as What I Learned from Charlie Thomas, who is with us tonight. And we have Opinion Place, you know, a, a rare piece of the internet that you can actually have an opinion. Phew. Uh, and also, we have a fantastic special guest tonight. He is a Welsh legend, Steve Spears. I know you're thinking, who? He's been in everything, okay? You might not know the name. You probably do know the name by now, but he's been in everything. He's written, he's directed. He most recently wrote uh, and directed and starred in uh, BBC Wales sitcom, The Techers. Um, but he's been, but he, you might know him as Burbage in Epstart Crow. And you might know him as whoever he was in The Phantom Menace uh, many moons ago. So Steve Spears, we can't wait. He's had a varied career. We're going to go on natter with him later. But first of all, Lucy, how are you, Bert? You all right? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that I'm, internet. I'm, I'm moving Ooh. home. Um, and I have to say, I've even started dreaming of boxes. <laughs> oh, my God. What kind of boxes? <laughs> Cardboard boxes full of my stuff. Um, oh, how's it all going? How's this, is it going smoothly? No. I'm a no dirty, dirty hoarder. I'm a dirty hoarder. Well, we knew that about you. Oh, ho oh, do, do. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that about you, though, Lucy. Um, okay, cool. And you're moving tomorrow, aren't you? You planned that yeah. well, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've only got a billion and one things to do and we'll do the kitchen sink. Maybe this week would have been a good one to have had our, a week off, but no, Lucy's a full-on pro. Well done. Uh, for anyone that is uh, well, coming, tuning in, remember last week, if you were here last week, where I was very much like, I get my hair cut, do I have a fringe or not? And everyone joined in and said, no. Will you be pleased to know? No, I did not have a fringe. See, I've got lots of hair. Very happy with my haircut. Very, very good indeed. Uh, also, it's spring. Woohoo! Look at these. Lucy, look. I grow these myself. <laughs> kind oh, of. Oh, you, you daft apeth. Hey! Hey! Look, I'm like David Attenborough. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> They're like, and these, they look like plastic online, but these are real little cutie things. I bought them from a shop. Um, they were, you know, bulbed. They were planted already. But, and look, look. My hand. Here it comes. Here's the ladder. I am Wales. Wales again. Because Steve Spears is from Wales. Shamai. Shadow Camrag. Tipping back. That's what we all say. Apart from the people who can actually speak Welsh. Ah, so Lucy, other than moving, you've got anything else for us? Um, I um, I came up with a joke right at like three o'clock oh. in the morning. Really? I wasn't sure if it was offensive, so I ended up messaging with our friend Di because <laughs> I was like, I need to run this past a Welsh person. Right, go on then. Are you gonna tell us? <laughs> and I came up with the image, and it's my face, and it says, "Put in the dim in dim shadow." I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I unless someone else from Twitter land tells me that I'm not allowed to like that, I like that. Oh, he well was done. like, no, 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 Lucy, but I can see why you'd be. And he's like, are you learning Welsh then? I was like, no, because that's the point. <laughs> Anyone who understands what Dim means uh, would enjoy that joke. So yeah, yeah. and also I, I think I could build on it, put in the Dim and Dim problem. <laughs> dim, Dim everything. Uh, <laughs> like and I did. Dari did say he was a little bit annoyed. He hadn't thought of it himself. Ah, uh, was that Dari Towler? Yes, it is. Oh, hi, Di. I haven't seen you for about seven months. Uh, maybe more. So every yeah. Oh, cool. Hi, Di. Um, 
Hi, Joy. Hello. Remember friends? Remember <laughs> seeing people in real life? Um, yeah. So um, one thing I haven't mentioned as well is that you are probably watching from all over the place. It could be Facebook. It could be Twitch. It could be, it won't be YouTube because no one ever joins us from YouTube. They use that for afterwards when they were like been working like Hugh, who has said good evening to us this evening. Hugh, genius. <laughs> uh, it never gets old. Uh, he, he's off to work. <laughs> Have a nice evening, Hugh. Enjoy. Last week, he messaged me on Twitter because we've become quite the friends now. And he messaged me on Twitter saying that uh, he has to guard a pond or something. I was like, Four oh, foot of duck poo. <laughs> Yeah, and he's, you know, he's just, I won't say too much because actually, but like, no, hang on a minute, don't tell the world what I do. But uh, yeah, I was like, oh, interesting. So good luck if you're guarding any uh, wildlife this evening and pond life. But anyway, you're coming to us from lots of different places. Feel free to join in, comment. We see the comments. We like to show them. We like to interact. Uh, so that would be marvellous. Okay, so are we ready? This, uh, we have a part, a part piece of the internet. Often he's sitting down at the keyboard. Yes, yes. yes. I just yes. thought it might be worth just popping this in now because right. I'm going to mention it the 17 times after we speak to our guests, Shani and Steve. But yeah. Yeah. we've oh, only yes. started with our next lineup. Yes. Oh my God. Right. Next week, guys, if you're watching, next week, Ursula Carlson. She has got a Netflix special. A Netflix, I'm like, not like, are you, if you're thinking, is there, a, is there like a Welsh Netflix? No, proper Netflix, like Netflix special. And, she <laughs> to and chat to us about comedy and other stuff. So, yeah, proper international guest. And come and join us. Come and join us. You can chat to a direct, and you were here when it all started uh you know so coming also can we put the thing up again can we can we just quickly look look who's, who's on the 29th what's on the 29th oh, is, it, is it is it Stuart goldsmith is it Stuart goldsmith in the guild of the podcast Stuart goldsmith so yeah, Stuart freaking Goldsmith coming on the kitchen sink. Well, they, they say you're not a comedian until you've been on the Comedians Comedians podcast. So yeah. by proxy, having him on yeah. our show, yes, does does that does that count? Uh, if the mountain, if the if Mohammed can't get to the mountain, Lucy, you've got to bring the mountain to us. So technically, we kind of will have been on. No, we won't have been. That doesn't count. That's like saying uh, having a uh, a review of on your show saying really amazing uh, chortle. It's not a review. <laughs> Comedians everywhere will go. Uh, sounds fantastic, chortle. Yeah, that that's a uh, code for comedians not having any kind of review. So they just say, oh yeah, chortle said it. No one's going to look into it. So no, we're, we're not technically, but how amazing! So if you've got any questions for Stuart, check them to us, and we will put them to him or come up. He's got a couple of fans. Now. We may get a few messages. Well, yeah, two. I believe. Well, I believe he's worked on his brand a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> keep it yeah. Back. Right, are we doing opinion plays or shall we? Because uh, our lovely Shani is it right? We're doing it. Look at that face, look at that little Lucy face. Right, it's a quick Shani one, but it's a, is but right, it's honestly, hilarious. I think if I can it's just get it off, well, I've been building this up now for a couple of days, so I'm gonna press the VT. Yeah, guys. She'll cry <laughs> if we don't do this. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you doing the van? Are you doing the picture, Lucy? Yes. Right, I'll do the intro. I'm pressing it. Right. Are you ever like, oh my god, I wish I had someone to express an opinion? Well, now you have with Opinion Place. Opinion Place. Opinion Place. Say what you want to the face. Opinion Place. Right. Come on in, Lucy. When you live in the country, like, I know I make it sound like I live in Midsummer Murders, but people have chickens and they sell their eggs in honesty boxes. Now, it is an unwritten bylaw. The six eggs, half a dozen, is a pound. All right? It's a pound. All right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I passed a place the other day. I got so angry, I nearly pulled my truck over to take a picture. One twenty. <laughs> all right? No, 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 no. I once, I actually did pull my truck over when I was up near Oxford. I don't know whether they're award-winning chickens, but they were £1.50. I took a picture. Oh, I sent them to my friend, Debbie. Oxford chickens. 
It's a pound. It doesn't matter. I mean, there is a place near us that does them for ATP, but everyone wonders why, so no one ever buys them. Set your standards higher, love, because we th we're thinking there's something wrong with your chickens. Why are they ATP? But I just it made it got me so angry. I think I was talking to myself about it all day, because everyone's got a pound in the car for shopping trolleys. You pull over, you grab the pound, put the pound in. No one's got time for change. Mm. No. no one's got time for that bullshit. Don't waste my time with that. It is a pound. I mean, if you want to go two pound, they, they better come in a gold box. But you do yeah. not. Well, that's like saying, "Oh, one thirty-seven. No, it's a pound. And oh, that's it. That's, I just, that's just need to get that off my chest. Oh, well done, Lucy. I, I can't believe that you that you've been keeping that in all this time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, who's got money on them anyway? They're lucky to get money. I'd be giving them an IOU. Oh, contactless is the next step. <laughs> I'll have a box a week. See you in five weeks, love, with your five breath. That's what I'd be doing. That's the man. <laughs> I have zero opinions this week, so we can bring Charlie straight in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to press the VT. Go for it. We don't know much, so Charlie's going to tell us what she's learned. Hey, hey. Oh, she's, Shani in. <laughs> she's in the dining room. Get in from the, get in from the dining room, Hold a smile. Hold a smile, Shani. Hold a smile. <laughs> you sound very clear this week of yours. Do I? Is, is, that, is that okay? Or should I go it's for brilliant. the end? Is that right? Yeah, that's really good. I noticed I on previous like weeks it. that like um, sometimes my audio was delayed and I got these for work meetings. Um, but something is bothering me just right down off the bat. I'm just wondering, like the person who designed them, did they like have they seen a human head before in the shape of it? Or <laughs> I what? think they were fans of Cybermen. What's all this? I don't. I don't need all this. You know what it is? It's designed for a man's head. Girl. Oh, yeah. yeah, goddamn men. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I raise my fist like that. That's quite menacing, isn't it? Um. <laughs> Get on There's, to Caroline Priado. I, I feel like um, I feel very privileged. I feel very privileged because right. Lucy is no longer stop motion. She's in HD and fluid, <laughs> fluid movements. I don't know what you did, Lucy, but I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's I'm. I'm got, I bought I'm, a new, I'm got a new modem. I got new cables, and in the end, I moved. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, five inch thick windows and walls. <laughs> I'm living in a tent, but my Wi Fi is amazing. <laughs> I love it. I'm um, so happy. Eh? I'm, how I'm much better is it? It's going to take us 10 months. 10 months. <laughs> I mean, it's made my hair better. Stay in. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, let's pretend Lucy hasn't mentioned her hair. You see, but your hair looks amazing. <laughs> looks oh, so babe. nice this week. <laughs> I know it always looks quite nice, but this week, oh, cow in lush love. What have you done to it? What have you washed in it? <laughs> <laughs> it does look nice. She's looking very sexy. Yeah. Little, I think she's got a little schoolgirl crush on a, or a certain special guest of ours. He's married. <laughs> He's married, love. Well, just I've actually this. got a massive crush on Robert Pugh, who is in the Tuckers. The old guy oh, in the shed with the shotgun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering, right? Steve is writing as we speak. He's currently writing series two and three. And he's quite a big deal with this series. So I'm wondering if maybe we could have maybe ask for a couple of war compacts. <laughs> I could be Robert Pugh's love interest. It could be. I, let's aim, aim realistic. <laughs> Maybe just a walk on. All right, Steve, at the bingo hall. That's where I want to be. Cause I love <laughs> yeah, yeah, all you got to say is, all right. That's all we say all anyway. Right, all right. All right. Oh, yeah, so that, Maybe that could man. Be a karaoke scene and all three of us could be it. We could be singing karaoke again, Shani. Oh, I'd eat that. Just get out of it. I'd eat that. I'd love that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm already there. I'm already there. Good things come in small packages. So does that old man. So do no. I. I'm already there. <laughs> Get the i fi on. <laughs> I like Tom Jones. She's a lady. 
Whoa, 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 she's a lady. I do hear that one. Talking I, about a special lady. It's, it's it almost like the radio's me, playing. It took me about 10 <laughs> years. Let me tell you a minute. <laughs> 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 Because I went to university in Pontypris. Right. Yeah. Oh, God, all they played, all educated again. <laughs> all they played was Tom Jones, Shirley Bassey, Stereophonics, one of the bands that won't be mentioned Catatonia. anymore, Catatonia, oh, and on, on Cycle. And, <laughs> and it's taken me a good decade to not flinch when I hear Shirley or Tom kick off. Like, what? Flinch? You might have your Welsh passport revoked for that, lady. <laughs> Thanks, Len. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob Alison, stick it. around. We've got Street View map coming up. Rob oh, like I, so I will keep saying. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hi, Rob. See? Hi, Rob. Hi, Len. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, let's crack it. So, Shani, what have you learned this week for us? Uh, I've learned uh, a few things. Uh, I've learned that the easiest way for me to wind Lucy up would be kind of a long con, but I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get some chickens, get an honesty <laughs> box for my eggs and charge £1.7 just to see if <gasps> finally break. <laughs> I haven't got a five pence and a two pence and a pound. Are you serious? I just want, to, I just want, to, I want the first time that we meet to be a complete breakdown just so bombed <laughs> instantly. I love it. Evil genius. I absolutely love it. I just want to also like educate around something, um, which is misophonia. So I put my headphones on and they're noise cancellers as well. Mm -hmm. I decided to have a ginger biscuit and all I could hear was my, my own eating noises in my ear, which is like... Uh, <sighs> I, I, I get hugely anxious about eating noises unless it's an animal. So so when people get anxious when people are eating loudly around them, it's called misophonia. But I so I could have some like eating a raw carrot around me. Like and I'll just be like, just don't 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 hurt them. So it's it's okay. They're just they're just eating a carrot. But my dog George, who's 10 tomorrow, if he's eating a carrot, it's it's noisier and more open mouth. He's like and I'm like, I love you so much. I would die for you. So I think it's um, the fact that I love animals eating, hate humans eating. I think it's more the fact that I, maybe I just don't like people that much and the fact that animals are innocent. Yes. I mean, it depends on the person, but I don't like some people breathing. I'm, <laughs> so. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Will 4 a.m. on a list of people I don't like out. <laughs> will, you say, will you insist on breathing? Oh, fine. Right, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I actually learned. I'll tell you like the thing where like I I uh, I went and had a proper look and, and tried to learn something. So what I, what I learned this week is that sometimes Tom Hanks is too busy to do voiceover work, so he gets his brother to do it for him. And his brother oh. is called Jim. <laughs> Jim Hanks. Jim Hanks. I liked Jim Hanks. I <laughs> My dad's called Jim. Oh, I, lo I love it. It's such a cool name. It's, it's such like a, a it's, it's the perfect name for like Tom Hanks' lesser, <laughs> lesser sibling. Of course he's called Jim. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I looked into it further and he doesn't do the, the films, but he does all the video games, all that stuff, anything else. He, he also does the Polar Express um, video game uh, voiceover. But he doesn't uh, like touch the films, and it just made me realize like you've got the Gillenhalls; they're like equally successful siblings. I I would say maybe mm. Jake like, but you know a little bit more. But you know I love mm. Maggie Gillenhall. She's just please come to my town and we'll spend the day together. And I want to come on to you. I promise. Um, but I, <laughs> I can't make promises. promises. You can't keep Charlie. Come on now. <laughs> She's so pretty. Uh, so like. Um, so they're like kind of equal, but like there's the Baldwins, isn't there? I remember Family Guy making fun of the Baldwins. It's like there's like a weak one. It's like the, the runt of the litter. It's like, you've got to look after him. He's the weak one. But like it yeah. just made me think like, like what are other siblings that we don't know about? Like what, I found out that Brad Pitt voiced um, a character in Happy Feet 2, but did he? Or did his brother, Keith Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got a brother called Keith Pitt, but I desperately... Oh, that was cruel. <laughs> I was I living in a world where that was true. 
And I've been watching a lot of um, The Good Place. I've just finished watching it, uh, actually, and uh, it is resoundingly good. It is just good. Yeah. But it's got all these, like, parallel universes and parallel lives and things like that. And now I'm wondering, is there a par parallel universe where Steve yes. Spears is Britney Spears' brother and he does the Vegas <laughs> specials yeah. and just mimes along to her music? I yes, would let's love to differently. I don't care. Come here for your conspiracy theories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I so it's uh, Jim Anks, and you got a photo of him, haven't you, Sarah? I do. Yes, let me find it. Where have I put it? Oh, there oh, it is. And Jim. Ah, Which one is he? It's the one on the have left seen, or the one on um, the right. Have you seen Tom <laughs> Hanks' son? No, it's his brother. She's just spent no, last time. Have you seen his son? son? Yes, yes, I've seen his son. He's fit. <laughs> they got good genes for Hanks, haven't they? He's good. Yeah, so he yes, son, no, no. his son is in um an Amazon Prime comedy called Life in Pieces, and I'm obsessed. And it got cancelled after like four series. And I'm like, no, it was so good. It's such good. I read 20 minute, like similar to Modern Family. It's really good. Really, really good. And um I think it's Colin. They're not great with their names, yes. that family. But they're good with their Colin. names. Colin Anks. Can I call? Can I call? <laughs> Do you remember Colin Powell? And everyone in the UK is like, it's Colin. Just call him Colin. They call it, it's Colin Powell. Remember that American politician from about 10 years ago? Oh, what happened to is, is it Graham? Like Graham? Graham. Graham or Greg? Greg? Greg Graham, James. Graham Cathy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's his favourite? That's a brilliant what I learned. Thank you so much, Charlie. Oh, you. With, what? I have got a question, though. Number Question number one. Do you reckon Brad Pitt's nickname at school was Arm? Right? Arm Pitt. Or Stinky. Brad. It'd be Stinky. Stinky Arm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or, has he, or has he got... Has he got a flat ass and they called him bottomless pit instead? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, he's got a Welsh cousin. Big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of lots of word play to do with pit. Uh, if you're I not already from Wales out. and you are enjoying this show, there is a <laughs> Welsh mining museum called Big Pit. And it's, I think it's an enforced bylaw of Welsh education that children must attend this museum yes. every two years, yeah, irrespective yeah, if they remember absolutely. what they've seen. If you've been, if you've been to I Welsh school, the, the proof that you can uh, provide that you've been to a Welsh primary school is a pencil from the big, sh big shit. <laughs> big shit. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't got a lot of money in Wales. If you've had a big shit, you get a pencil. The big shit. You need a pencil from the big pit shit <laughs> gift shop and you need evidence that you've been on S4C because if you haven't been on S4C, you didn't go to a Welsh primary school. Uh, I did not go to a Welsh primary school then. I might yeah, have been on s I took part in a quite massive choir thing when I was 11. And I yeah. loved oh, it. I probably oh, did that then. <laughs> <laughs> We sang uh, hallelujah. No, it wasn't hallelujah. <laughs> if you don't have a giant pencil that is too big to write with from St. Fagans, were you in Wales? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have the money for a big pencil. I would have I would have died for a big pencil. That's a good gift to have. You know when your aunties and uncles ever went on holiday? What did they bring you back? Somebody's getting people. something for Christmas. <laughs> somebody would get a big pencil. I'd be like, you know when they all brought it to junior school and they were like, oh, look at my big pencil. I'd be like, I don't get a big I'd be like, I, I'd get like, I think the best gift I ever got of anyone from away was the sand from the Isle of Wight. Oh, oh sweet. I know. Little sand from the Isle of Wight. I also had, um, you know, those um, sweet dummies. Do you remember them? Sweet sticky. Yeah. Sticky. Very sticky. They yeah. last like a week. And then your mum, you know, throws oh. it out one night and hopes you don't notice. Bluff. Covered in fluff. But those big those big dummy sweets, they were signs that you were a fan of, I believe, Mark Owen, circa 1993. 
Because he was the baby of the group. Probably. I mean, I was 20. Well, no, I was 20 in 1993. But, you know, there's no age to liking big dummies, is there? I think the guy who carried on dated a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think we all thought the same thing then, just like wistfully looking out the window like, yeah, there's been some big dummies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Charlie. All right, um, well, I'll leave you, Bill. Oh, thank you. well, it's always lovely to see you. We never want to chuck you out. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your nibbles on the way out in the dining room. Thank I'm you. I'm obsessed with Lucy's hair. It's waving very well today. I'm very jealous of your wavy hair, Lucy. It's gorgeously nonchalant. I love mm. it. It's, um, I, I dried it. I dried it with a Volvo. Um, I washed it last night. I put it up in a bun before I went to sleep. It was still wet when I woke up, and I dried it using the air jets of a uh, eleven plate Volvo. Um, usually, <laughs> oh, I only have this so level well. of success. I only usually have this level of success with a thirteen plate Scania, but um, it really is about the two air jets. <laughs> mm. I'll keep an eye out for a Volvo on the street next to dry my hair. <laughs> oh, thank you. You was You're awesome. Welcome. <laughs> to send a phallic shaped rock from Blackpool. Thank you so much, huge. I look forward to it. I'm not giving you my address, but thanks no, anyway. No. <laughs> Good effort. <laughs> Good try. All right. Throw me out then. Yeah. Love you. Love See you too. Soon, Charlie. Bye bye. Bye. Ah, oh, thank you, Shani. So that is what we learned, what Charlie learned. So who would have known it that Tom Hanks's brother is cashing in big time on Tom Hanks and uh, doing all his voiceover work? I never knew that. I like learning all the stuff that Charlie teaches us. It's so good. Right, we got I'm three just minutes. Panicking oh, the, yeah. I'm just panicking that Steve's got the link. I've sent him the link, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet him the link. I'm just gonna double check that he's got the do you know what I mean? You know, you know when you're like, do yeah. I leave the cooker on? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'll I'll hold the fort. I'll drive the engine. Uh, at this point, does anyone want to chat to me? Anybody want to send any comments? Anybody got any questions ready for Steve when Steve comes in? Um, old Steve Spears. He's been in loads of stuff. Uh, he's been in uh, the Phantom Menace, Star Wars, the Phantom Menace, the original one. Pro, you know the one we all hated, but we won't mention that. Uh, it was in that. He's been in loads of stuff over the years. His IMDb is ridiculous. Um, but most recently in Upstart Crow, and he's written and directed and starred in his own sitcom on BBC One Wales, which uh, still counts. So it's really hard trying to get anything on BBC One. Oh, can I just mention my cat's gone a bit mad this week? Um, anybody else got a cat? <laughs> So my cat, right, Maisie, black and white, she was crying a bit earlier because she's been, you know, I work, so she's been in the other room uh, a lot of the day. And uh, so I put on, there's, if anyone's got a cat, this is really useful. Cat TV on YouTube is really good. Just put on the cat TV, Paul Dining or Paul Dining, he's from Cornwall. You can have hours and hours of close-up shots of birds eating you know, bird food and the cat goes mental for it. And what's really good is like you love birds, you love squirrels, and it's on the TV. And she's not bothered about the little ones. It's the ones that are massive. So when they're on the TV and they're really huge and they're like the size of, you know, bigger than her, those are the ones that she's going, oh, come on in, come on in. And she's beating hell out of the tally then. It's hilarious. So I've left her downstairs. She's on a little moon, but to just put on the old cat TV and she's quite happy then. So that's really cool. Well, it's, we, uh, we put our girls into a cattery today because because oh, you move in because because of the move and just before I left for work this morning, Willow wanted to go out and she like had a demon inside of her. She's like, I'm I'm going out. You're letting me out. I'm going to check every window and every door because you don't know where they are. You're keeping me in. So I managed to give everyone a kiss goodbye before I don't see them for a few days. But Willow was like, so you. She was just hiding under a bed somewhere. She was Aww. just like, free, free me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Aww. So I've sent, I sent Steve the, the YouTube link just so that he knows, you know, if he wanted to watch it on YouTube because he's that way inclined. And I've also, I've made sure he's got the StreamYard link to join so the stream. Any second. Oh, hello. 
<laughs> <laughs> so fantastic so we have our fabulous guest is in our dining room as, as you notice because lucy and i both had a little shriek <laughs> <laughs> so lucy so, we got our guest is in the dining room what food have we got for our lovely guest in the dining room today well because I love a bit of Steve Spears on Twitter, I've been following him and I've been listening to the podcast. I've spent all day making a sausage and lentil casserole. But the thing is, it didn't come across as very finger foody for a buffet. So I tried mm. to put it, it ended up looking like, like Alan Partridge. It was a mug of lentils with a sausage sticking out. So I also bunged in an emergency quiche just in case he wasn't feeling like he wanted to get slop. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it was it was cheese and tomato. It, it was from last Christmas, but a quiche in a freezer never goes out. No, absolutely. Every mum's got to have a quiche in that freezer, isn't it? You never so, know. Well done. Is it fully defrosted? Did it, is it cooked? I mean, I'd eat from the edges first. Right. Be careful in the dining room, Steve. You don't want to get salmonella poisoning. That's yeah. the, you know, we do want to poison our guests, really, do we? That's a good effort. I love that. Because uh, especially, it takes him days to make that lentil bait, doesn't it? <laughs> Version seven is what he's got. <laughs> oh my word! I want the recipe. I want the recipe. To be what honest, I could have done with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lucy, are you doing the video? Should we welcome our esteemed guest in? Yeah, we're going to play the intro video, and then we're going to invite Mr. Spears in. And I'm going to, I'm going to try and speak without doing this noise. Okay, right. Okay, special guest. Cool it, right. <laughs> Intro. So, Mr. Steve Hi, girl. How are you? <laughs> Over the moon Hello. that you've joined us. We're not doing a podcast about rugby, so thank you for coming on anyway. <laughs> I was just listening to you um, when I was in your backstage bit. Looking at my, I just, um, I've just been feeding the kids, which is always very stressful. And I just looking at my colour, I look like I've just had a skin peel. I mean, look at the state of that. Um, anyway, um, I was listening to what you were saying about um, your sausage lentil casserole. Right, I, I quite fancy myself as a bit of a cook, and I stuck up a few recipes on um, Twitter over lockdown. And my and I was really chuffed with my sausage and lentil casserole. I thought this is going to go down a bomb. This they're going to love this, but the presentation wasn't the best. And I got to say, it did look like something had been sort of stuck in a U bend after about twenty <laughs> scaffolders had been in your house. And um, and it it, oh, it looked really bad. And my butcher who normally goes, "Thanks, mate, that was fantastic." When I went in to get my faggots the next day, he said, "Look, that looked absolute shit." He said, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Business like that. So, yeah, not, my, not one of my best efforts. Did you see the other ones I did, though? Did you see my, did you see my non-cooking um, efforts? The, oh, I've, you... I've, seen the, I've seen the Doritos, the salad surprise. Yeah. I've seen... yeah. Pigs in blankets, what sits inside hula hoops. I tell you, it's the way forward. What sits inside hula hoops? Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. If and, you're a crisp uh, manufacturer, I'd be all over that. Oh, yeah. And um, I also do um, a sort of half and half. So instead of rice and chips, I do with uh, what's it's and Doritos. And you can put anything <laughs> on that, really. What's your favourite flavour of Doritos? Um, well, they all taste the same to me, to be honest with you. So, I mean, really? it's, yeah, I can't, I can't taste anything that, that's... Um, Come out of a plastic bag. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of my the hot about. fiery ones. I love the yeah. hot fiery ones. But I crunch yeah. them up, cheese, 30 seconds in the micro, and then guacamole, sour cream, salsa, all of that. Oh, that give that a go. I stun it. That, that does sound nice. And um, also the word micro I like as well, because that, yeah. that again suggests. No cooking skills. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever did you ever go to the cinema down Cardiff Bay? And if you paid extra, you could go upstairs to the fancy seats where you were allowed oh, alcohol. Oh, and right. there you could get 
You could get, um, well, basically they were Doritos and it, there was a bubbling vat of what they called cheese yeah. sauce. <laughs> no resemblance or ingredients oh. to cheese. Yeah. And it was free. So you'd slather it on like a soup. Yeah, on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a, never seen a bit of cheese. That thing had never seen a bit of cheese in its life. Also, if you got there early, it could literally burn the skin to the bone. But if you got and it, it's not a movie. It can't yeah, think. <laughs> what do you think about? I follow them. I follow them. <laughs> oh, it's Kayla's to go on so long. <laughs> oh, listen, I know it's our first date. Oh, what are you enjoying? <laughs> she never came back. She never came back. No. The rest of the night, with your tongue in a microbrewery overpriced yeah. pipe near the pipe yeah. near the gamblers. <laughs> Yeah, but she never came back. Nachos, molten, cheesy thing. <laughs> Trying to have a kiss through that. That was it. And great it was, was great, but no, she wasn't having it. Better off without Steve. Better off. <laughs> I leave her. I leave her. <laughs> I leave her. <laughs> are, you over the, are you over the rugby on Saturday? Yeah. I mean, I was in mourning for, you know, a, a day, which I actively encourage in my house, um, whether it's rugby or not. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, but the thing is, you know, we're quite melancholic as Welsh anyway, aren't we? And um, my wife is Polish, and 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 they and they they're right out as a nation. You know what I mean? There is no optimism there whatsoever. So really? between my mel oh no, good dog no. Between my melancholy and my wife's sort of natural demeanour, this house we sort of vacillate between sort of deeply unpleasant to suicidal. We sort of either <laughs> well. Well, you know, we wake up in the morning and only oh, the wrong word and we're looking for the nearest fucking beam. But it is part of the Polish um, it's part of the Polish psyche, I'm afraid. Because they haven't had it too good, you know, in terms of historically they've been persecuted by everybody. They don't trust anybody. I say to my wife, it looks like it's gonna be quite a nice day today, and she gets out the phone, she I'll check her, huh? Google. I say, Oh, well, you want to check that, that's fine. Or I may something like I, I may say something that's an absolute fact. Like, um, yeah, a bloke called Gareth Edwards played rugby for Wales, very well known, number nine. Really? Yeah, I said he's very famous. I'll check that. <laughs> what? Check everything. I just, call the kids from there. I just call the kids downstairs, Max, our elder. Is that his name? Yeah. Hang on. I'll just check that. You <laughs> yeah, said she was Polish, not Czech. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey. 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 Oh. <laughs> so my niece Marie does that to my grand, my dad, her grandpa, all the time. It drives him insane. You know, they just have a conversation. She's, I'm checking that, checking that yeah. now. Awesome. Yeah. I know. Really I know. Annoying. Yeah, it's it, it is an odd. So yeah, but it's just so so I actively encouraged um, the the morning that went on in the house, and I watched it with my um, my nine year old boy, and it was the first time we would watched uh, a tournament together. And to be honest with you, that wasn't out of any sort of parental love. It was just so I couldn't go to the fucking pub with my mate, so I had to stick and watch it with him, you know. Um, yes. So I, uh, <laughs> but it was great. And um, when we came to that last sort of twenty seconds, and there was, you know, twenty seconds to go, and we were up by three points, and I said, "Look, this is in the bag. We got this now. It's okay." And uh, and then it turned around, and he looked at me like I just told him that you know there was no Santa and it was <laughs> pride. <laughs> you lied to me. You lied. <laughs> oh. And he didn't speak to me until about twelve o'clock uh, on a Sunday. Which was quite regular because my wife doesn't normally on a Sunday either, so it's sort of great. So we all kicked off in the right mood. <laughs> well he's learning young. He's learning how to be disappointed. And, and, yeah and he's you. definitely you know I mean he's half Polish, half Welsh. But he's definitely got the Welsh genes in there. The fact that he looks sort of really angry, very, very upset, <laughs> and, and he wasn't going to let it go. And he'd hold it now for years. That bitterness, then you know he's Welsh, when he won't let go of it, then you know you're okay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I don't think the whole of Wales could believe it. And that's no. when we needed to be able to go to the pub to, you know, talk about how much we couldn't believe it. But no, I next know. year. Next year, never mind. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, we'll still win the championship if Scotland do a job. Um, tomorrow oh, evening. Then, I can't know. cope. 
I can't cook. No. I have to be fair to you, right? I'm not, <laughs> you might be shocked to learn. I'm not a rugby expert. I go and watch it at my parents because I love it. I love watching my parents watch the rugby. My dad's a massive fan. You know, he used oh. to play rugby as a boy. And they'll both be screaming at the screen. And I tried oh. learning about rugby, but I think because I you know, obviously didn't have a willy growing up, it clearly wasn't as important to, to learn about <laughs> rugby rules. So, so I'm like, oh, that was a good try, wasn't it, Dad? I want to try. That was a conversion. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just trying to join in. <laughs> But I, I, love love it. It. I just love it. and like but Saturday I walked through the door because bloody what time did it start like 8 p.m like what a stupid for a rugby game come on guys you know and it was the threat they were in France and bloody France were doing the the camera and oh, uh, my, dad, oh and my dad was saying oh we won't see we only see when Wales do something wrong we don't see anything when France do anything wrong because it's the French cameras and I'm like oh and they're moaning about the ref and I was like oh so it's great for all that but I was like I can never cope with the second half of the Welsh rugby. They're not so, I think they're better now, but do you remember years ago, it felt like the first half they would play their hearts out and then we'd be like, they're gonna win. And then the second half they bloody give it away. Like every time, this is about 10 years ago. And I'd be like, I can't, I cannot cope anymore. I, I know. Cope on Saturday, I, so know. I don't know if I'm gonna watch this weekend. Cause I'm like, oh, I can't well, cope with it. Well, I'll, I'll watch it, but I mean, you know, it's sort of, it's out of our hands, but. The thing with the French television is that you get sort of the sports directors who are quite artistic. So there'll be a sort of, was it a try or not? And they'll show a sort of the sunset coming over the stadium. <laughs> the stadium, shut up, mate, get it off there. We want yeah. to know if the try was good. Oh, Can you show us a rugby ball, please? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that one in the middle, when he was like on the telly for like 10 minutes, what, and me and my dad was, we, it was a try. And then my dad, oh, I don't think it was actually. I'm like, it was a try. The middle bit of the ball was on the bloody yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was good for all that. Enjoyed all that. Try, I don't know, shut up and watch the dew drops. Just gently settle <laughs> on the side of the pitch. Shut up. Yeah, no. <laughs> right. Lucy, so it, can I ask like, you something? You, you go, drive you go. a lorry in the morning. I do. Well, so what do you do? Do you deliver? Uh, I don't do I don't do steak either. No. Sorry, um, or a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I used to be an Arctic driver, so I used to do arena tours for music tours. So I have been to the Millennium Stadium. I've been to a lot of Polish stadiums as well. I've, I've lucky. I've done a lot with Six Nations. But now I'm a tipper driver locally, and um, I do my I start I get in there about half six, and I do my daily checks, and then I. I get the phone out and I think of who do I want to come on the show and I do a little piece down the phone and I bully you by cyber. Bully? <laughs> what does a tip the driver mean? What is, what, what are your tip? Just going to tip? Basically, it's, 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 it's like a big bowl on wheels. People put, put stuff on the top of it. I turn it, I open the arse end and I chuck it on the floor and I fuck off. Tip it off. That's the sort of job. That's the sort of job I want. Can I just yeah. because we think of it, it's just great, isn't it? You know, you have to worry about all these things. I mean, what am I going to do? How am I going to get the, the, get in your bloody lorry, get it filled up, drive off, tip well, the I, I used to do up. jobs where you'd have to, like, with rock and roll or, like, with music and stuff, like, they're yeah. stupid sets that you've got to be so bloody careful with. Like, I had yeah, yeah. lighting racks, like, um, meat racks, we call them, with all the lights hanging off, like, yeah. 100 grand a piece and stuff like that. And you're like, every pothole, you're like, Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> especially on the phone. Not with a chip Not with a chip of You think bollocks. I'm tipping this lot off anyway in a minute. It's only oh, sad. Oh, oh. Yeah. I, was, um, I tell you another job I was I fancied is, um, you know, in an air, um, airport. You know the blokes who drive those little little buggies? Right? Yes. They yes. got you know, people sat at the back or they got uh, little trolleys they're taking around and that. And, you know, I'd just like to think that they sat there and a the bloke comes up and goes, jump on there and go and get something over there and just drive it over there. And I love the idea of that. I just think, what a lovely little job. You're driving in the, in the daytime. You're, you're chatting to people. You're just, yeah. you know, you're to mingle, driving around. And, um, you know, and I wouldn't, you know, I just like to think there's not much pressure on you having to make the decision about... It's like light, isn't it? Beautiful. Just a really lovely... You know, you're meeting lots of drivers get a bit of a bad rep that we're always heavy footed and we cut people up and we're, you know, catching our tail all day. 
but it's not like that anymore. You're tracked within an inch of your life. The number of your companies on the side of your door, you've got to be so yeah. respectful. And it's just like, I'll get there when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> traffic See, jam, take this eight by the hour. <laughs> We get people, I'm just going to check, cut in here. We get people uh, asking questions. We've got a couple of lovely uh, right. comments here. We've got Lenny Lennon. Can Jenny. I swear? I, I don't know if there's children watching. Do <laughs> I, can I swear in this or is it too late? We've already. It's, yeah, yeah, already it's, fine. it's quarter to eight. They should be in bed. Oh, yeah. Fuck them. They should be in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Three seconds. Wait, Mum, the faggot. <laughs> <laughs> So my mate Len has said, has Steve ever done stand-up? He should. Crying, you're laughing in my kitchen. Oh, bless. No, I've, not, I've never done stand-up, actually. And I hugely admire the people who do. And, you know, I've got mates who do it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, should, I mean, I write. So <laughs> I, I can see that it would be a matter of chiseling and drafting the material and, and doing that. And, I, you know, I've got to say it is an itch I've had. And I have said that, you know, before I turn 40, I'm going to make sure I do that. Before I, uh, I, you're laughing in my fucking faces, girls. You're laughing at God's sake. You've had, 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 had my skin peel ready. You've another 10 years ago. I've had my skin peel ready. I've put the kids to bed. You're laughing at my sausage lentil. And you're laughing in my face. Um, so, yeah, I would, uh, I would like to... Um, to have a go someday, perhaps. Uh, but I think I'd probably do it somewhere low key, and you know, see if uh, see if I could get away with it a bit. I think that sometimes when I'm writing things, and you know, I will write sequences in the Tuckers. I've just been writing two series of that in lockdown now, which we're about to start filming. And um, you know, when you you're on to you're onto some sort of theme that you like, or there's there's a subject you suddenly get onto. When, so you're having a sort of internal dialogue. And I'd love the thought of having that dialogue with an audience. I did um, so I, I did do a job, actually, uh, a while ago for the Welsh National Opera. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I know. So don't, um, don't get too impressed. I want to sing it. So what <laughs> I was, my brother's a singer. He's an opera singer, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Lloyd Roberts. And he's sang, you know, he's, he's been all over the place. He sings with the English National Opera and at uh, Glyndebourne and the Coliseum and all that stuff. So, uh, proper stuff. Uh, not like the old tat I do. So anyway, um, he was there. And uh, anyway, my, phone, my agent had a phone call from the WNO. We'd love Steve to do this part in um, an opera. And I said, oh, they've got the wrong bloke. I said, it's my brother. Tell him to give my brother a ring. So no, no, we want Steve to do it. And it was basically a, an opera called De Flader Mouse. And... At the end, the last act is uh, a bloke who goes on and it's a talking part. And it was done in the Royal Scottish Opera by um, Billy Connolly years ago and Frank uh, e. Howard had done it in the English National Opera. So it was big boots to step into. But the idea was you could write your own stuff and talk to the audience in between. And so I did have a flavour of it within the structure of a show and I really enjoyed it. You know what I mean? It was like... Um, but I sort of had the safety of a character to be behind. So I don't know I don't know if I'd have the balls to just stand there and be me. Um I think if I got a character or something then I'm all right with it. But yeah. But a character is no different to working out your own persona. I mean comedians have a persona. We're, yeah. We play some level of character. You do, there's very yeah. few comedians that stand up there and their true self comes out. As they are. Mm. You could be yeah, I reckon you could you could say to yourself, you just have to write character. yourself a piece. It's very and close to your actual self. Yeah, so, sort of like my, mildly depressed, uh, overweight, red skinned, bald, <laughs> takes to the stage, too many kids, take it from there. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Like, well, there's well, a lot of competition well, in that field, though, Steve. There's quite a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. But I'll sew it up. Don't worry, once I get in, they haven't seen the levels of despair I can hit. Don't worry about that. They'll all look bouncing little chummies very happy <laughs> by the time I get to the deeper inner thoughts of my life. Don't worry about that. <coughs> On the subject of you writing the Tuckers, though, Sarah and I were having a little catch-up before we went live, and we had to both, we both remarked on the fact that, well done, you managed to characters and backstory to your female characters. 
Unbelievable. Um, it's not done often. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you know what? It's really interesting because it's it's based loosely on my family. Um, and I did have a grandpa Murphy that lived in the outside of Bog and he wouldn't come in. We had to drag him in, you know, in the night. Yeah, yeah. But also, um, the three generations of women in the Tuckers, like Peg and uh, Natalie next door and Shakira, you know, they pretty much run the roost and they and they they're in charge and they're dominant and they're strong. And that's and that was my upbringing, really. I was brought up by women. You know, my dad was always in work in the factory, um, worked nights a lot. It was always shut up, your, your dad. Um, he was the first one that I'd moved underground. They were all miners before then. So very proud of my dad. He worked at, he's sort of above. Um, but I was brought up by, by strong women, you know, and women who, I, you know, my mother, you know, they, they had, you know, I always say that the, 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 the valley's women that I knew are sort of two cheese wires, you know, one yeah. round your heart and one round your bollocks. And they knew <laughs> them, you know, and they'd either say, with their little cheese right around your heart, come on now, come on, why do you come on? Or if you weren't, weren't playing, they'd move it straight to your bollocks. So you get home now. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> come home, come home, get home. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I'm, so, now so I can hit you. I'm glad you picked up on that because, you know, it was a um, it was a conscious decision that the, that the three women were very, even though the men thought they were in control, the three women were, and they've got, as you re realise in series two and three, and the thing with the sitcom is you've got to bang the first one out and say, this is our world. This yeah. is the world we're in. Come and have a little look at it. But well, then, even the fact that you gave the older female character a, a, a sex, she's a sexual being, a woman over 40. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Positive. Yeah. Sex positive, both of them. Yes. And, um, you know, die up and down. <laughs> die up and die down. Up and down positive, uh, you know, positive. person with a disability, but positive. Yeah. Positive. Yeah. And do you know what? The other thing is, is I, I've said this to somebody the other day. I said, if you look at Natalie, you know, who is next door, she's aspirational. She wants to, you know, she's active. She's, um, you know, the things that have happened to her in the second scene, but she's somebody who really wants to make the best of everything. She's yeah. got a house that she's extremely proud of. She worked hard. For everything she's got, and she's climbing the ladder, and she wants to do really well. And mm -hmm. I think that she's a positive role model um, for her daughter, who mm -hmm. runs around around the others. And in fact, the only person that the boys are doing their best. All right, they've got a van that they're using anyway <laughs> to, to make I love money. Their own as do. They've got a van. <laughs> the, the only person in it who's an absolutely, you know, sort of lazy wastrel is Glyn, and he's told <laughs> every week. You are a lazy piece of shit in no yeah. uncertain terms. And, you know, and every week he suffers because of it. I mean, I, I think there's a thing in writing which is really important when you're writing your central character in a sitcom is, is to put him up a tree and throw stones at him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I think that's really important that that, that, that whether it's, uh, you know, Mannering or Faulty, all those iconic ones, with yeah. Glenn, like, make sure that you he, he's going to, He's gonna have his come up once every week, but whereas Natalie, when she does his heart uh breaking and heartbreaking for Peg, and you know, the three women have got a lot more ruling of the roost to do in um, you know, in the next uh three two series as well, which is you know, I'm, I'm very proud of good cast as well, isn't it? Cracking cast, yeah, such good a good cast. I'm, I'm a I'm a massive fan of Robert Pugh. Um, oh, if you need I, know. I love I know. interest for him. Oh, he, oh, right. Okay. Well, I'll make a note of that. He's. Um, yeah. We're he, available you know, for any yeah. walk on part, Steve. We, yeah. we, we, we don't both, mind. We'll fill it. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, generally, I say to people who want to be in it, you know, I've looked at my budget, and as long as you can do it for a Twix and your bus fare home, then I reckon you book skills. So you'll be. Like, <laughs> I can drive. I'm going to take the Twix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Bob Pooh is. Bob Pooh is just such an amazing heavyweight actor. And I've, I've known him since uh, the first job I ever did on Terry Bob had written, actually. Um, and we do have a sort of um, Murphy Glynn relationship off the stage. <laughs> so Bob will say to me, um, no, Stevie, I think, what's for tea today? What's for dinner? And I'll say, well, I, I think I'm not sure, Bob. I, I'll go and have a look at the catering wagon. I, I wouldn't mind a bit of chicken. But I don't think they've got chicken. We'll ask them if they're going. So I'm running back and forth. Like Glenwood with Murphy, do you know what I mean? So it's um, yeah, it's it's lovely to have him on board. I'm chuffed about yeah. that, really. Yeah, very excited about going again. I got to say.
Yeah. Are they, do you know when you're going to start filming yet? Or yeah. Uh, to... We start in June. We were supposed to go last year. But, um, you know, lockdown happened. I was in the West End. I was doing the Ben Elton um, sitcom or um, the West End show of, of Upstart Crow, which is a show I do with Ben Elton. And, um, yeah, they suddenly said, we were about to go on stage. You know, I was about to put on a 18 inch cod piece when I was told we were going into lockdown. <laughs> Not many men can uh, say. I'm sailor. Well, you know, I've got this lockdown. Get your cod piece out. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, so I was very lucky that they commissioned pretty quickly to do the, you know, the, the, the next two series because. I'd have been, you know, I would have been buggered because all of, you know, like so many people, your livelihood just stopped like that, you know. Um, and I got too many kids to 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 stop doing it, you know. So <laughs> you can't be a trucker then. We've got lots no, of kids. I be a I, well, my fiftieth my fiftieth birthday present to myself was uh, a vasectomy. Ah, treating yeah. yourself. Yeah. You'll have it in I ten years' time. Yeah, I do. Save I will be at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my um, that was my fiftieth birthday present. I said enough of this. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have my balls done. So yeah, it was. Oh, it was, um, congratulations! Yeah, very I was aware. For it. <laughs> very aware the time is running now, but I've been yeah. asked to ask you a question on behalf yes. of two massive fans of yours. They're, well, little massive fans because they're only little. Um, so Tilly and Molly. Are massive fans. One of them loves you from um, Pirates of the Caribbean, but yes. Molly loves you. I'm sorry, Tilly loves you from um, Boy in a Dress. Ah, yes. And her question is: So, have you ever worn a dress? <laughs> yeah, many times. Many times I've worn a dress, and um, I've worn a dress uh, in shows, and I've worn a dress to fancy dress costumes, and. Uh, you know, they're very difficult to get hold of to fit me, to be honest with you. I think, to be honest, I've quite enjoyed the experience. I feel it's quite nice and airy. And I dare it's say... freeing. Yeah, yeah, it's very freeing. I dare say uh, to Teddy that if they did dresses that were probably my size and they sold them in shops like we and walk in, I'd probably buy one again because um, I've enjoyed the experience every time I've worn it. So, yeah, I have yeah. worn dresses. Um, I think all I, men should wear them. This is it's so yeah, fabulous, nice. isn't it? It's, but you know, you know when, I go, when, when did I go on holiday um, once? And um, oh no, I wasn't on holiday. I was filming in uh, in India. I was filming Sharp, uh, the TV show, and um, it was so hot. And they gave us these traditional costumes there, and it was fantastic. A big sort of you know airy, open sort of. It, it was so lovely, very freeing. And I thought, yeah, no, I could, um, I could get used to it if they do it in my size. Yeah, no, no, not at all. Yeah, no, no problem with that. Very nice. Oh, awesome. Well, I would love to say from the bottom of my heart because, like, I've seen you on TV in films forever, and just love, love your acting, love your writing. So thank oh, you so you. much. Thank you for coming on the show. And I'm also, a I'm also, a, I'm a child of the 1970s, brought up in Wales. Do you remember Quangos? And felt very much like, oh, you know, I wanted to be an actress, but, you know, it was very much like, yeah, if I get a job first. Do you I know. know what I mean? And you did it. You you oh, did it. That's amazing. And you did as well. And you guys yes. have as well. You know what I mean? Yes. It's really, Joe, you know, it's, really, it's really interesting as well, because I think that, um, you know, I go back to Merthyr sometimes and we, I, I've done stuff in schools and I've gone back to speak to kids. And, you know, and I've always said that, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to believe that you can do whatever you want to do. If I'd listened to the teachers who told me at the time, I wouldn't have been doing it, you know. And I've always just said to them that, you know, you just got to believe that what you're doing now in school, as much as you hate it at a time or whatever, is you're just building the trampoline, really. You just build in the trampoline, and then it's up to you to bounce on it as high as you dare. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that, which I think is worth us. And it's a note for all of us, really, isn't it? You know, build yeah. it and then fucking bounce on it high. Yeah. You oh, just do build it and they will come, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> build it and they 
build it and you can bounce on it. Do you just no. feel the dreams? <laughs> yeah, I did like that, yeah. Don't build it and they will come. I'm saying bounce on that package. <laughs> what am I doing? Right. Um, <laughs> That's the difference. I'd much rather be in a trampoline on a bloody baseball field any day of the week, anyway. And they didn't come in the end, did they? It took ages to come. <laughs> Two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. I'd have gone there, they're not coming. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 from, 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 being, from growing up in Caffilly, though, it's been amazing. Finding out that the Tuckers was filmed in St. Gennett, the minute I saw it, yeah. I knew yeah. it was a Merthyr. Yeah. And I... I I, I genuinely, and the incidental, you know, the noise, I know it's obviously put on by some audio tech boy from like London ages later, but there was something about it. And I thought, that's not, that's, that's not Merthyr. And when I looked it up, no. I found out it was again, and I was like, ah, I knew. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's such an amazing uh, little town again. You know, it's got that fantastic clock in the middle. And I've, I've used it so many times to film. And the people there are so brilliant because i think they're quite used to the circus coming to town to do bits of filming um and we're not you know i'm going to main road going right through it so where we are it's a bit like having your own little back lot really you've got the streets and they're fantastic it was very hot and um you know a couple of the neighbors would come and watch the film and sit on the bench at the end of the street and uh you know give you a cold drink and it was really lovely we got to know the people and you know, i'm hoping they're gonna have us back and that and um but it's just it, and you didn't have the traffic noise that's what i loved about it you didn't have yeah. that traffic noise which you get in a lot of valleys because you, of the you get that a lot yeah. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, and there's obviously somebody with a tipper just tipping the way that shit they want <laughs> don't <laughs> leave it yeah. <laughs> yeah. get rid of the tipper woman <laughs> um, <laughs> so she's coming she wants a job tell her to off <laughs> <laughs> Where's Robert Pugh? Pull again, pull again. It's Robert yeah. Pugh's love interest. Tell her to beep, beep. beep. <laughs> I love Kefili. Get rid of the scatty cow. Right, action. <laughs> action. action. <laughs> oh, Steve, Excellent. thank you so much. Uh, um, wait, listen, we... good luck with it all, girls. It's been really lovely to chat. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, and uh, you know when we're out in the real world again, and you're doing your stand-up, I'm going to come and have a look at you. Yeah. Yes, please. And we can put please. on a nice yeah, charity. We can come and do a spot. Yeah. That really as long good. as your persona isn't overweight, bald, mildly depressed man with two kids, because oh, that's, that's the certain. Oh, that's, that's going around my persona. Right. All right, mm. get rid of it now. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a whole new act, <laughs> Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Follow Steve on Steve Spears for Look Out yeah, for out uh, the Tuckers. We'll check it I'll check you out, Steve. How do I get out? <laughs> Will you let me out, you? Thank God. Yeah, I, thought, I, just, I thought it was like room then. I thought I'm going to be fucked. I'm here now. I can't get out. I'll <laughs> kick you out and then you turn yeah. your machine off. Everyone Bye. say goodbye, Bye. Steve. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Steve. Oh, how lovely, Steve. Absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm loving the fact that I've yeah. only kicked him out slightly. I'm enjoying watching him try to work out how to close his computer down. He <laughs> can stay. It's fine. <laughs> we won't look in the background. <laughs> He's enjoying oh. that lentil stew in the kitchen, in the dining room. <laughs> we did it again. High five. High five. High five. <laughs> How cool, Steve. How lovely. Thank you so much. Don't leave. We've still got more show to go. We're reviewing Bridget Christie. Stand up for her in just a moment. Let us fangirl a little bit, though. <laughs> Whew, Hugh, massive apologies. He already mentioned it. So uh, Hugh Jane's question, which I was, I was trying to... It was hard to get a, a word in between Lucy uh, and Stephen, a little fluent there. Um, uh, and Hugh Janus's um, question for Stu was, do you ever sing songs with Duff Hildemouse? He did mention it. Whilst comparing the superior upright Hoover to the useless Dyson. Hmm. Comparing. Yeah, and I was thinking comparing as in comparing a night, but no, comparing. <laughs> no, it needs more like as in going. Comparing. <laughs> as in to analyse between. Oh, how cool is that? I lovely. I just oh, I it come like across I... so genuine in every interview I've seen. Yeah. And you can see why you know when he, he plays Chris, in, in a, in a, he does play some really Woo. gritty characters, but he also plays they they 
it's almost like they go, oh, we're going to think of a dim-witted person. They, they put Steve in it. He is really versatile, but there's always a core element of him that comes out through the character. And I am absolutely over the moon that he was as gracious and as brilliant as he was. He's the, he's the best. Love him. <laughs> Love him. One of my favourite guests, all our guests. How lucky are we, mind? All our guests are lovely, but he was super, super lovely. Like, if you're I'm watching lovely. Wanda Sykes, I've, you've not replied to my tweet. <laughs> Tiff, Tiffany Hadish, come on. You've not love. replied. You've not there replied. <laughs> Joan Rivers, come on. Where are you? <laughs> Actually, I haven't contacted Joan. Joan? 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 <laughs> what was that? You're not coming on this piece of shit show? She heard us. <laughs> Yay! Hey. Good on you, Joan. Oh. <laughs> oh, I just want to give him a hug. I go, know. Can I be your fifth wife? Well, I, I mean, he lives in that. Cardiff, so we can invite him to one of our shows, because I'm sure there will oh, be a time oh, yeah. when we are back. Forget that. We're doing one this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> just on his front garden. Steve, we're here. We're here, Steve. Who said you wanted to see us? <laughs> Have you heard the one about? <laughs> I've been to my swimming club. It's shit. Yeah. So thank you so much to everyone that uh, joined. Uh, you know, I hope I, I, we've got to, right. I know this is my fault. I know you didn't tell me. Look at that face. I know you didn't tell me off. I couldn't help but talk about the rugby. And then before we knew it, that was 15 minutes of our time was up. And I was like, no. Did you see my but face? We, yeah. And I forgot to say, like, I'm like, oh, I forgot to say how much I love Burbage and um, start, start. But he knows. He knows. You know, you can't fangirl too no, much, can we, you? We wrote a load of questions. We don't usually write a load of questions. We did write a load of questions. We I think we got this one. We, we, I think we managed to get, cheers, Dave, Dave Dart, and I cite the flag. Um, I I do think that, that we got what a lot. Flag? There it is. Oh, there yeah. it is. The reason why we've got more male viewers than women. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, Sarah shows her T-shirt. <laughs> I could do that. Me. Nobody would see anything. It's just like an ironing board. Um <laughs> So um, let's move on to the review section because everybody's going to want to see. So okay. um, I'm going to roll the VT and you fuss with your hair. One, two, three, roll VT. <laughs> oh, it's worth it just for the cash. My hair looks lush today. Your hair does look lush. So it was my turn to suggest a car, a, a comedy. <laughs> Every week we uh, review a comedy, and it's more a case of, hey, I've seen this thing. I think you should see this thing and tell us if you like it or not. So my choice is one of my top. 10 favorite probably possibly number one number two maybe favorite so no pressure bridget christie stand up for her which is based on her edinburgh show a bit for her which i bloody saw it was a lot of amazing but the netflix show is pretty much the same thing from what i remember it's so fantastic and also i met bridget christie in mach uh, at the show uh, as i as i left just went Oh, you're amazing. And she was so nice. She was really lovely. So we, we need to start, you know, I know you've asked her to come on the show, but I, I might even message someone myself. I might even message her myself. I know. That's how much I want her on the show. I, I have her. never, like every time I land a location, you know, I, I drive along and, and, and I do this thing where I, I say, hey, hear me. And I send messages through my phone using my, yeah. hey, hear yeah. me. Um, yeah. But... And I just, you know, if it beeps, it beeps or whatever. Sometimes I'll say, hey, hear me, read message out, whatever. But every time I land, I'm at Twitter, mm -hmm. which is not replied. <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> which is not replied. <laughs> Try again. Keep going. Maybe once Stu Goldsmith's been on, we can, that's why I want to ask Stu, is um, suggestions. Do you know Bridget how Christie? You, <laughs> how do you get people on your show, Stu? 
<laughs> right, so anyway, back to the review. So uh, it was my suggestion. So Lucy, you go first. What did you think? I only know Bridget Christie from her Radio 4 shows, which I love. Ooh, which are also excellent, which yeah. Are stand up. Mm hmm. But it's it's more gentle. It's more like a, a lecture. Do you know yes. what I mean? It's a bit more like with Simon Evans goes to market and stuff. You can imagine it's it's more of a radio theatre. You can imagine it with people sat down. And yeah. um, I didn't think of I thought Bridget Christie as as the radio show, and mm. and I just I hadn't I hadn't gone out looking for her stand up. So I put it on, and I messaged you, didn't I? Within three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Which you never, you've never done, never ever, because we tried to keep it as a surprise. And I was like, "Fuck this! <laughs> He's coming the review, Bridgman. Bloody yeah. hell, she's fucking brilliant." <laughs> Didn't I say? Didn't I say? I mean, I mean, and then, and then I was talking to um, Maggie Irvin yesterday on on mm. phone, and we were you. talking about um, the use of pauses. Um, uh, just the style, the physicality, like her picking up the pen. Um, oh. Just, I mean, and, and like Maggie's big part of always, if you make a mistake, always make sure you include it in the show. So like when she couldn't remember the next bit, she goes, I wrote this pause in. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and and she, she, <laughs> she, some people, they will do a, a, a third voice. She does this thing where she doesn't finish her words. When she's like, so I was saying, but it, it's not, and, 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 she, and it works. You know what she's trying to say. You finish those sentences for her without the material being hacked. And then she comes in sideways with like rape fantasy at the end. That is the best ending line of any stand up show I have ever seen in my life. I, and I was just like, hey, Bridget, please come on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love you so much. Come on the show. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, you know, it, it, it makes you laugh. It makes you reflect. You remember pieces. Like, honestly, to have the confidence of a short, fat, sweaty, balding Liverpudlian, it's, it's what, it, that's what I've been doing with my Be More Man thing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, I remember that fucking Bic coming out in pastel pink, and I was just like, you can stick your coral rubber up your ass. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and she made a whole the show out of it. Sport of pen you would give an arthritic. Yeah. Or any, well, you know, arthritics need to write too, but you wouldn't say. I know, I've got it. <laughs> That's why I know what they fucking look like. <laughs> I so I'm so glad. I love her. Her indignation when she was. Oh, oh, I just love it. Watch it because I know I sounded I didn't do it properly. But she, her indignation, her are you listening to me? I am listening. I'm just writing up the next banner. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So her indignation, the fact that the show itself, you know, like a lot of the uh, stand-up shows are very glossy on Netflix. People come on a massive stage, huge hall. This is, she's an amazing act, but this is an intimate venue. It's a beautiful venue. Yeah. They see a lot of the audience, and it's as close to an actual stand-up show as you ever get. Because normally these big glossy shows, they'll, they'll show a wide shot of the whole theatre, and then they just show the act. So you at home, you're like, oh, I'm just, you know, seeing the act. Whereas if you're actually in a theatre, you're looking around and you're seeing other people, and that's what helps you to make you laugh because you're seeing everyone else laugh that's why they do the shot back to an a usually an attractive woman laughing like you know it's a male comedian up there and it's like some gorgeous girl like, ah, ha, ha, you know with boobs out and everything and um but this is an actual you get to see all, a lot of the audience through a lot of the show and uh, so i love that Her indignation i just love the the premise of the show i how fucking clever it's, you know, when she talks about um, Sterling Moss, is it Sterling Moss or Bennett? Sterling Bernie? Moss and his fucking sister. And his oh. lift. His lift. And he was like, yeah, oh, just, just, do you know what, guys? Just watch it. We're finishing like, soon. Because I've got a brother. Just watch like, it. the it's fact so that Sterling good. Moss was an amazing, amazing race car driver, but it turns out his sister was a fucking amazing race car driver before he was. 
And then yeah. he said the quote about how women have the physicality to be a race car driver, but not the I mental aptitude have... or something yeah. along those lines. I yeah. would have kicked the shit out of my brother if he had said that. Yeah. Oh, I won't spoil it for you, but there's a callback that is it's so it's so Weirdly blind. enough, do you know it's usually so when blind. we do our reviews, we yeah. do mention the punchlines and the subject matter. Yeah. But with Bridget, I almost <laughs> I, I almost don't it. want to. No. Do you know what don't I mean? Do it. Don't do it. Just watch it. She's but, fucking amazing. You know, like like when we looked at Wanda Sykes and we were talking about Donald Trump with the toilet paper on the back of his foot. And I mean that I mean we 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 went through the entirety or maybe with the balloon and the little things and we've mentioned jokes after I mean look what we did to that Australian fucker. What's his name? <laughs> But do you know what I mean? We go into the depths of each joke. But with Bridget, mm. I'm just like, we'll we'll, we'll dance around amazing. the issue. We'll use certain words, but ultimately, you need to go yeah. see it yourself, love. Yeah, I've seen that show. It's got to be about five times now, and I know I, I listened to it I again. Then driving, the it works. It yeah. works as audio. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I can download stuff on my phone now. I could download it. Well, well while I'm not driving anywhere because, you know, COVID. But, um, oh, I was yeah. going to say, you were going to say, like, don't listen to comedy when you were driving. I was like, ah, oh, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always listen to comedy when I'm driving. Like, like um, oh, I've got a, get me, I've got a YouTube subscription, uh, which used to be Google Play. And that's that's got a lot of stand-up comedy on there. Like, there's Pete Holmes I really like and uh, Maria Bamford. And they've got whole shows on there. Um, and I already paid for the subscription. So, um, yeah, she did a show before a bit for her. I think it was the year before. She did one called Ant. There's little bits of it on YouTube. But Chris, Bridget does try her best to get to not be on social media. Um, and I, I think it's around, you know, make, not being vis as visible on social media for privacy. So but are you still, saying it forces that you to go and see the show? She's not replied because she just hasn't checked a message yet. Could be. I reckon that's what it is. I am on her mailing list, so if I can, I will be responding and going, Hi, me give, me give me a email address. Give me a <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll give it to you because you're the best. You're much better than me at getting anyone on the show. Um, so, yeah, so that Bridget Christie stand up for her. Just freaking watch it, guys. If you haven't got Netflix, just get it for a month. You can cancel it just to watch that show. It's bloody brilliant. Right, Lucy, I've done two weeks in a row, so it's got to be your turn. So what, and I have no idea what you're going to suggest. So what's your suggestion? I took inspiration from a conversation I had with previous SYNC guest, Dr. Maggie Irvin. Yeah. I've gone oh. proper Lucy on this one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right, is it old and is it a clown? <laughs> is it Laurel and Hardy? <laughs> Phyllis Diller, Diller. 1977. <laughs> Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay, cool. Is it a special or is it just watch her clips? It's 55 minutes of Phyllis. Brilliant. Oh, great. Let me write that down now. You know what I'm like? I'm always like, I'm going to watch that. Like over the weekend, I'm going to watch that. And then it's always Thursday afternoon. Oh, I'm like, have no, watch <laughs> <laughs> have I got time before the sink? Oh, yeah. Because last week I was like, oh, a couple of minutes late, a minute late. And I was going to say tonight, oh, I've been here since last week because I didn't want to be late. And then I forgot. Right. <sighs> Do you know this? So I'd love to get Steve Spears back on again. I've got loads I know. of And also, also, from watching Bridget Christie, when she, re when she listed all the comedians, um, that she admires. Um, I'm also about to ask Haddy Hayward, Ooh. who you may know as Holly from Red Dwarf. Yes, cool. She's next in my crosshairs. Well, who is it? Say again. Who's the new cross? Holly. She played oh. Holly in Red Red Dwarf, but she's one of when when Bridget Christie does a rant about Holly. being compared to a feminist comedian from the seventies. She's like, thank you. Yeah, and she listed off all the famous names, and she was like, "And Jenny Eclair, and I'm at, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seen her love. I've spoken to her, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fab! Yes, I tell you what, though, guys, next week we've got a feminist icon in the making, old Ursula Carlson. <laughs> Amazing. She has 
a Netflix special. Can you see what's missing off that poster? Oh, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> She's a Netflix special. You need to delete that. <sighs> delete. Netflix special. And she's here for April Fool's Day on 1st of April. Woo! <laughs> so we're going to be here next Thursday. April Fool's Day, yes. there's no date on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just spend the time updating the poster by putting the date on and the Netflix special just to show. Doesn't matter. Just. It's Maybe because that I was already in the banks. The one I'm sent out has got all the updates, but I was like, oh, yeah, I've already got it uploaded. I'll leave that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim Newton has said, in the room. In the room. Oh, I don't know. Hey, Tim, Tim's the truck driver. Ah, Tim the trucker. <laughs> right, Tim, my partner. Right, you're, you're here in time for the end of the show. Yay. Um, Carl, um, Carl Morgan, you messaged me during the show for a link for the show because you said you'll miss the show. Tell you what I'll do is I'll finish the show and then I'll send you the link. Well, if you've missed the show, if you're here at the end thinking, oh, it sounds like you missed a good one. They were all good, but this was a good one. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on the video in the kitchen sink on Lucy's. Um, loads of Lucy stuff. Comedy My program. Comedy, show, program like comedy, fan, comedy page. It's out there. So if you out. go on to go Twitter, YouTube, I would. If you go to yeah. Twitter at the Sink mm -hmm. Girls, we put Follow each it. week all three links on there. Like if you can't find us from looking at our Twitter profile, you shouldn't have a smartphone. <laughs> So what we would like you to do is to like and share and tell people about it. We are every yeah. single week, except for like every six weeks or so, we take a break for our mental health. Yeah. So um, just to reiterate, before we let you all go, we are on Twitter at The Sink Girls. We are on Facebook, which is Tea Kitchen Sink. We are Twitch Tea Kitchen Sink. We have got guests coming up. Like, how about people with their own motherfucking Netflix special? Or how about people that are fucking stalwarts on the scene to the point where they have their own comedy course? Or we have people that have had Edinburgh shows that are now leaning into online and they've got branding issues. Like, Lorraine's um, um, quarantine cocktail show was brilliant. And then we got the daddy. We've got the daddy of the sofa. Yeah, he's leaving the living room and he's joining us in the kitchen. We've got Stuart Goldsmith. And then we have TBC Carlson. And I, I like the fact that it's TBC. Um, we're waiting on him to come back on the date, BC. Um, I did. <laughs> he's not Welsh, but he is an ally. <laughs> <laughs> ally of Wales. He's an ally of Wales. Tom, then. It's not Tom Jones, then. <laughs> no, but he's busy writing a radio foreplay at the moment, so I can imagine that he's probably focusing on that before answering silly emails from me. Um, he's got another week before I just tell ring his mum or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have her number, but I'll get it. <laughs> she will get it. I'll send, I'll send him a mum a monkey. I'll send his mum a monkey and see if he gets back in touch. Right. Um. <laughs> thank you very much, guys. You've been amazing. Please tell people about it. We couldn't be more regular. It really is. If you if you can't remember everything else, just go to Joke Pit and on any all the platforms, and we'll be there. But really, truly, and thankful everyone. Thank you for joining in, joining in the chat, watching, and talking about us. And we've had a lot of lovely messages to come in because, like Sarah said, Steve. I'm not going to say he's an inspiration, but he has shown that you can come from a small town in South Wales and end up literally walking the streets in Hollywood and getting phone calls off Ricky Gervais just asking you if you want to part. Um, yeah. It's it, he, he, he's, he's, the, he's the Welsh dream. He's not the American dream. He's the Welsh dream. Um, and, and, yeah, we're just really, really happy with everything that's going. And, Sarah, I just want to say a bloody love you, love. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to play the outros. Unless you have anything else to say. And then we'll wrap this up, motherfuckers. Lucy, I love you too. And thank you so much for nagging people to come on the show. Because without that, we wouldn't have a show. So thank you. Uh, yeah. you know, what is it? What is consent? Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on Twitter, Bye. it's fair game. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Well, that was
was the kitchen sink? Did we make you laugh? Did we make you think? You can now go to the loo. You can treat yourself to that great big poo. And we will see you next week. Yeah! See you next week!